Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the BRICS PLC math instructions and there are several uh, different instructions that we can use within this BRICS controller. And the first one we're going to look at is the increment instruction. Now the increment will add one to a register and it will continuously add every scan to that same register. So what you'll see is I'm connected currently right now, my program is communicating to my BRICS PLC and I'm communicating via this uh, USB connector right there. So if we look at our increment instruction, you'll see I have two different ones up here. We're incrementing to the same address V0. So in the first case here, I'm using the um, just the continuous on instruction. So when it's on, it's going to increment that V0 by one. And it's going to be doing this every scan as long as C0 is on. The next one is on C1 and what that will do is it activates once there is a transition from an off to on or the leading edge one shot so we're going to use that leading edge one shot then to trigger this so then it should increment only once so let's just turn this on and see how it works so we're going to change that value and move it over here so we can see and we'll just turn that on write that and automatically what you'll see is when I did that we automatically now are incrementing that uh, V0 location by one every single scan that we have. If I turn it off now you'll see that it now stops. So let's uh, exit from that. So that is my increment. Uh, let's look at this increment um, using the one shot. We'll change that value once again, we'll, right now we're at uh, 46,580. So if we were to turn it on, it automatically just increments one only. So it goes to 46,581. And it won't, and now we turn it back off again. And we'll turn it back on. And it increments by one only every time the transition is from off to on. So that's because of the scan itself. So let's just turn that off and we'll exit that and the same with my decrement my decrement instruction will actually subtract one every time um, we have a condition met or this wrong is true so again we're decrementing by c2 and then we're losing the leading edge again off of c3 to decrement only by one so let's look at that decrement by one only we'll monitor that value and you can see my my value up here my v0 under my data viewing so let's uh, turn that on and again that's exactly what happened it turns back to a 81 so it was 82 now turn to 81 let's do that once again we'll turn it off and then when we turn it the transition to from off to on again it should then decrement once again by one and sure enough it did if I were to just power that off and then we'll take a look at element C2 and what we'll do is turn this one on and when we do you can see now we're decrementing every scan of the PLC okay. and let's just turn that off okay. so that's increment decrement the next instruction that we're going to look at is our linear interpolation. Now what that basically will do is we plot out series of inputs and output points that interpret whatever I put as the input and output will then be corresponding on our output variable. So it's easier to see this if I looked at a chart. And here's my chart up here. You'll see my blue line is my input. My red line is the output that I want, and I've plotted six different points on this uh, curve here. So as I put an input point in, I get the corresponding output point on my red. And you can see that it doesn't have, to, it's a linear ver between these two sets of points. However, I can have up to 50 input and output points, and they work in pairs, obviously. And 
what it will do is it extrapolates the output value for any given input value that I have. So I've given an input here and I get the corresponding output. So right now, if I look at my instruction, here's my input instruction right now. I've got inputting 1.2 and I'm getting 5.7, which is actually corresponding to my, in, my first input point, 1.2 and 5.7. If I put in something like 1.2, five we should get some number between 5.7 and 8.9 that's the exact interpolation we have between the two so let's put in 1.5 in that value so let's just go back to my data view and what we'll do is put 1.5 we'll write that into the controller and sure enough that's exactly what I did it says our corresponding output is 6.57 and if I look back at my um, chart again so we have um, our input 1.5 which is both there and sure enough it's above yeah 6567 so right around there All right. so that's our um, linear interpolation so we do this for um, any values that we see that are nonlinear, such as uh, drive motor curves, uh, we could actually have them pre programmed in this instruction and give us a, a result output on it. The next math instruction I want to take a look at is the random seed. Now, the random seed instruction sets a seed value that will be used by the generation um, to generate a random integer or generate a random real number. And we use the math functions in order to generate that real number. So what we do is we use the real time clock to generate the random seed. And then we use some math instructions. And you can see that we multiply this by a thousand. Then we truncate it and we uh, add one to it. And then we get a random number between zero and a thousand every time that the C4 is activated. So let's just monitor that to, or change the value of C4 bring this down here and right now our random number on the output is 674 if we turn that on what happens is it goes to 913 is my next random number we'll turn that back off again and turn it back on and we go to 123 so you can see the numbers are constantly changing it's a very random number that we're, we're getting into our controller so that is our random seed. Okay. The next, uh, next instruction is probably one of the most powerful ones that we'll be using all the time, and that is the um, calculate expression. So this is our math, and this is an expression that will calculate exactly what we want to do um, with anything here. So what we do is we have an output. In our case here, we have output R, R11. And what we're doing is we're calculating the centigrade to Fahrenheit degrees so that we can display our um, information. So if we put in a Celsius, we'll get a corresponding Fahrenheit. So in our case right now, um, we have R10, which is equal to zero, and zero represents 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we edit that and we can put in the value 10, meaning 10 degrees, 10 degrees is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. If we put in, um, say it's a warm day, it's 30 degrees, we have 86 on the Fahrenheit scale. So very straightforward. And these are real numbers that we're dealing with, so that's why we see some decimal places in there. Now the math expression, it can be used several different functions. And those functions, if we call up our help, um, in our do more designer software this gives you a very good indication of exactly what happens and in the math expression itself we can have 1024 characters and each of these expressions can be nested up eight levels deep and chained between operators within function parameters so if we look at all the different options we have this explains a lot more of the detail of the actual um, instruction itself we have arithmetic operations so add subtract multiply divide percentage raise the power negative we have binary and bitwise so and ors xors inverts um, shift left shift right 
unsigned shift shifting. We also have logical operators greater than, greater than, less than. Um, we have logical ands, logical ors, logical nots. We also have common functions like um, absolute values. We also have maximum values, min values. We also have real numbers. So we can do fractions, we can do rounding, we can do square roots. Uh, convert, we can convert to integers or convert to real so that we can place that output uh, register with the, the data that we want in there. We also have a whole series of trigonometry functions that are listed right here. And if we click each one, you'll actually come up with a different and it gives you a little sample of exactly what that instruction will do. So very powerful. We also have statistical. So there's, there's where our rounding came in. Uh, random, sorry, a random integer and random real that we just did here with the random seed operation. We also have maximum averages, etc. We also have conditional functions. So we check if then or if else expressions, count if instructions. Then we have time instructions. We have now, we have milliseconds, microseconds, etc. And then we have memory functions itself. So very powerful instructions and the help will actually simulate or go through an example for you or with you so that you know exactly how that math instruction works. Okay, so all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.